And this man is the the OG, the voice of your Miami Heat, Eric Reed, who you guys can catch on Valley Sports Sun, giving you post game coverage locally after one every one of these NBA Finals games. Go check that on out. Eric, kind enough to join us here as the Miami Heat evened up the NBA Finals at <laughs> game apiece. Uh, Eric, thanks for joining us. Much appreciated. And I know that uh, nobody. You cannot be surprised the the uh, tenacity of this team to go out there and win in Denver and have this uh, NBA Finals all even at one apiece coming back here on Wednesday. Tobin, Leroy, and crew, great to be with you. Great to be watching Heat basketball yes. in June uh, in the NBA Finals again. This never gets old. Yeah, if you're surprised still now, uh, that's proof you have not been watching. Uh, this is such a, a mentally tough, physically strong, emotionally well-kept team um look look at look look how many comebacks seven wins after trailing by double figures how many times they down in the fourth and you you, you know you, i said this on our last post game show you're starting to see championship qualities emerge in this team uh if all you did was watch game seven at boston in the conference finals after the way they lost game six uh, they dominated game seven, you know, at TD Garden and then the comeback in Denver and, you know, give Denver not only their first loss at home in the playoffs, but their first loss, uh, you know, with a lead going into the fourth quarter. They were nine and oh in that stat wow. before that game. So, I, listen, I I think we could be in for a, a long, hard fought, fought series. That's that's what I'm expecting. But the Heat are in great shape. I, I think they're the better defensive team. I, I think they're the deeper team. I think right now they look like the more disciplined and, and hungrier team, but we're still early in the series. Eric, I I think some of the things that you explain about this Heat team, we've all had to be that way this year. I mean, holy smokes. I mean, you have to watch this Heat team and go, don't know what's going on. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to hang in there, but whoo. And, and they just, like, they all stayed patient. Uh, Spo continued to say, hey, we, we, we got some things working here. Jimmy wasn't panicked. Nobody was panicked. And now we're here. And I'm still like, uh, all right, I, I understand. But it's like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. Nobody has, Leroy. This has been one of the most unique and improbable playoff runs. Not, only, not in Heat history, in the history of the it's, league. I mean, yes. it's Jimmy incredible sports. what we're watching. Listen, by Heat standards, this was an extraordinarily frustrating season with 44 wins and the up and down nature of it, yes. the total inconsistency of it. But, you know, I, I think people are reading it wrong in this regard. Uh, people are looking at the heat now and saying, hey, the regular season doesn't mean anything. It means a lot. But, you know, not I, I think not in the way that we all measure it by the amount of regular season wins you have. So, you know, that's one way to measure it. Another way, look at all the close games, um, the winning habits built, um, the adversity overcome. That's what was meaningful for the Heat this year. Uh, it steeled them together. They're used to playing in close games. Look how good they, they've been. Out, they, they've been so much better than Milwaukee and Boston in the fourth quarters. And, you know, we saw what they did in the fourth quarter the other night at Denver, a 36-point fourth quarter, one of the great fourth quarters in NBA Finals history, guys. It was extraordinary to be down eight and then get that Duncan Robinson blitz of points in the first two minutes of the quarter and, and hold on and win. So it's an incredible story. No team has won an NBA title, by the way, with, with 44 wins, as little as 44 wins since the 1978 Washington Bullets. So it's historic what we're watching and it's joyful, man. I, I know it's stressful when you get this deep. Every <laughs> possession means so much because this is joyful. Right now, there's a burden of hope and expectation. But up until this point, um, you know, Miami made it this far without carrying that that suitcase full of expectations about being here. This is totally uh, improbable and unexpected, except by the 17 guys in that locker room, the coaching staff and, and, and the whole basketball staff in Miami. This, this is what they are built for. Um, this is really what heat culture is all about. And it's a, it's a listen, we're still right in the thick of it. It's a proud time for the organization, uh, for our fan base, you know, and, and you start with the ownership of the Arison family, the leadership of, of Pat Riley for close to 30 years. 
we are all enjoying, you know, one of the most successful franchises in professional sports. Think about it, seven trips to the finals since 2006. Nobody else has made that many. Eric, I'm curious, you know, you've been obviously around Spo forever. Um, he's usually, and especially during the regular season, is just cool, never overreacts to anything. But I've found him in this playoffs to almost have like an edge to him. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just he knows the difficulty of this, if he is, you know, blocking out the noise from everybody that counted this team out. But I'm like, you know, you think back to after game six, he was ready to go immediately right afterwards. You think after this game where he doesn't want uh, their strategy just broken down simplicity, uh, drop us off in parachutes. What have you made of just, I guess, the, uh, the persona of Eric Spolstra in this playoff run? It feels like a guy who's uh, had more of an edge to him. I, I think he always, Tobin, great points, but I, I think he always, He's so composed, whether it's after a win or after a loss, the poise. Listen, I really believe in this cliche. A team reflects the personality of its head coach. I, I think it throughout all, all sports and, you know, his defiance, his confidence, his grittiness and perseverance and his basketball IQ and always figuring out a way. How many times have we heard him say over the years, we have enough? Listen, there, there are coaches around the league who will tell you, oh, uh, yeah, we played five games in seven nights and we're missing this guy or that guy. With, with Spo and the Heat, there's never an excuse. There's only uh, an opportunity to get better and figure out how we can win the next game. So he's a tremendous coach. I, I think the illumination on him as a coach and the Heat as a, as a franchise and, and that Heat culture has been illuminated in such a clear way, maybe the most clear way that it's ever been illuminated mm -hmm. right now with this cast led by this star player and Jimmy Butler, um, who's become one of the great players in, in heat history, doing it at the most important time. And Bam Adebayo's having a great playoff uh, and a great final so far. And the list goes on every, every night, other guys step up, you know, Gabe and Duncan and Max and and how about Spoh's move going back with with Kevin Love? You know, there are a lot of people feel like that move won that game. Uh, you know, Miami took Love out of the starting lineup in the Boston series when it wasn't working, and after Game One of of the finals, Spo realized Love was needed, and you saw how different Miami looked. Let's first of all, uh, Martin was under the weather with migraine. Yeah game but putting love back in there you saw the rebounding those those snappy outlets into the front court that get the heat into a, a faster tempo so a million different coaching moves along the way but spo and his team are are in are in the midst of an incredible incredible journey getting back to uh to bam out of bio eric the, the he's got you know spo said after the game maybe the toughest task in the nba right now going up against joker but you know, what have been the things that have stood out to you so far in these first couple of games with him in that matchup? Aggressive, not hesitant, yes. uh, 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 sure of what he wants to do. And, you know, listen, they looks like they're giving him the best shots in, in his arsenal. You know, he was with Giannis. You know, they were the two best paint scorers in the NBA this year. He gets around that dotted line. You know what he's ready to do, sign and score. So uh, right. he's getting a steady dose of those shots, and he's making a lot of them. His defense is always exceptional. Uh, you know, he's not the, the passer that Jokic is. But then again, nobody is, but he's a very good high post passer. And you see in all those backdoor cuts by Duncan Robinson, the Heat's playing as a team, Bam Adebayo such an integral, important part of the team. And I'm really, really happy for him that he's having this kind of postseason and off to this kind of start in the playoffs. In terms of Jokic, guys, it's an impossible cover. It really is. You're going to give up something to him whether you want to or not. But listen, it's been proven out. I felt this way before the series, and I think I'm more convinced of it now. You can live with him getting 40-plus points. Look, they're 0-3 in the playoffs when he scores 40 or more. It's like those 14 assists in game one, because that means he has gotten Murray and Gordon and Porter and maybe KCP going. Um, if you can keep the assist total down, and Miami was able to do that, four assists for Jokic and five turnovers in game two, um, that appears to be the way to go. How Miami does it, um, disguising their doubles, timing their double teams well and using them judiciously. Because You know, most guys you could disrupt with a double. Him, he's going to pick you apart. The zone defense has worked. You know, 
They they withstood 41 points by Jokic in game two, including 18 in the third quarter, and they still won the game. So the defensive uh, chess game that Spo is playing going to be intriguing as, as we watch um, the series and the strategy change and shift from one game to the next. Eric, if you had to go to one stat after tomorrow's game, it would be Jokic assists, right? That would be the telling, the telling stat of the game, not necessarily the points or the rebounds, but if he's below 10 uh, assists, then that means the Heat are doing what they need to do. I, I, I agree with that. Leroy, listen. I don't have the stat off the top of my head. Uh, it's been out there six assists or less. They they do not have a good record. Um, mm-hmm. He's so gifted. He, no matter what you do against him, listen. We're the last team to get a chance to try to figure out how to defend him. Uh, nobody's been able to do that for the last three years. Uh, but I I agree. I think his assist total is it merits watching because you know that's what makes Denver so difficult to beat when Jokic gets everybody else involved he's mm-hmm. going to get his no matter what you do Eric uh, come on before we get you out of here it seems like there's a new report on Tyler Hero every other day he was maybe going to be there for game two now they're saying he's still dealing with hand soreness. what if he is able to come back what do you think he could provide for this or do you think it's 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 a, t- a, a tough ask at this highest stakes for Tyler Hero to provide anything after that much time off? Well, listen, I, I, I was not in Denver, um, so I'm just giving you my opinion, not not facts on it. I think even if he was 100% ready and healthy right now, it is tough to insert a guy back um, after he's been out for seven weeks um, to this moving train, uh, you know, now that you're in the finals and things are going mm-hmm. so well. It's tough. I, I would just tr- trust Coach Spolstra on when the right time and place was to bring him back. But my guess, this is a, a, a distraction for the media right now. I don't see it. I, I, I don't think, you know, re- reading between the lines of what Tyler has been quoted as saying, that he's still got soreness on his follow through. Um, the injury is probably still healing. And even Tyler admitted uh, he doesn't want to upset the chemistry of this team that's so hot right now. So let's leave this to Coach Spo. But I'm I'm going to go on record by saying I would be a little bit surprised to see Tyler Hero return in the series. It could happen. Um, I'm not sure that it will happen. Uh, before we get Chad, go ahead, Marcos. What do you got for uh, Eric before we get out of here? Eric, quick question. I know this was the NBA Finals the national media didn't want. But this is business as usual down here. And the city is buzzing. I'm just curious because I miss hearing kabooms and seeing, you know, and hearing your voice as the Miami Heat succeed in the NBA finals. Is there a number that someone could throw your way where you could go to someone's private party and do a play by play live? Is there a specific <laughs> number that we can get you out here calling the game and we'll just put the game on mute? <laughs> you, you must be eavesdropping on Crowdy and I. Do, do you know that we do? We we do a. It, first of all, it's the. Oh, I've learned this over my thirty-five years with the Heat. There's only one downside to the the wonderful job I have, um, and that's you know the way the rules are now in the league. Or in the '90s, you could go all the way through to the conference finals and still do local TV. Uh, under the current rules of the uh, NBA TV contracts. Local TV is done after one round. So think about it. You don't get to do what you do in the most important game yeah. your, your team is going to play, but you live with it because, you know, there might be a time or two in life where it's okay to be selfish. This sure as heck is not the time. So I'm always <laughs> happy for my team when we get this far. I'm happy that my team carves out a role for me uh, in the playoffs. And right now that role is hosting the postgame shows home and away. But for every game, and and this is something a lot of people know and a lot of folks don't know. Since the late 90s, I have been doing a, I'll call it a fake broadcast of all of these playoff games that gets recorded and used for Heat Archives and now for social media. And it's weird how much I enjoy doing it, even though you you may hear a soundbite or two. I don't care how it's used. I'm, I'm so happy that the Heat have asked me to do this because in a, in a real way, I don't feel like I've been cheated out of calling these games. You're not hearing it, but I'm doing it. And um, Crowdy and I always joke that we should be out during the week between games selling subscriptions to this. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I buy that. Guys, listen, we're in the Fox Sports studio in, in an office with like desk lamps and, you know, and uh, nice. it's an unu- we did it during the pandemic that way. 
and we're doing these finals games on the road that way. And I told Crowdy this. I said, John, the minute we start doing it, you're going to forget that it's not real. So we treat it like it's real. We enjoy it like it's real. And you get to hear a soundbite here and there. But we're having fun doing it. And we have a blast on the postgame shows with, with John Crowdy and, and Coach Rothstein and Jeremy Tache and Jackson Amy. Uh, it's a good show after each and every one of these playoff games. Well, we love hearing it, Eric, and especially uh, I think as we've noticed nationally, we definitely love that local flair with how uh, it's been it's been treated around the country. Everybody catching on late to the heat. So go catch uh, Eric and the crew there on Bally Sports Sun after every one of these NBA Finals games. Game three tomorrow night at the Kaseya Center. Eric, we always appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eric. Hey, appreciate you guys too. And never mind what the national media wanted. The TV ratings have been great. And let them keep talking about how the other team, you know, failed rather than how the Heat are succeeding. But I think overall, people are catching on. Uh, we've got some friends out there in the national media as a franchise. Kendrick Perkins, I put him right at the top of the list. Shaq, Stan Van Gundy, uh, Mike Breen, and Jeff Van Gundy. Uh, pe- people that, that watch with intelligence understand how special it is what the Heater are doing and, and trying to get done. Guys, enjoy the rest of the series. Tobin, I'll see you at Media Day and uh, at Game 3.